for the fourth part of the notor notorial <laughs> notorial for beginners. <laughs> no dread tutorial notorial. Uh, okay, that's my laugh. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. And we continue today with No Dread for Beginners and this is the fourth part, uh, Data Processing. Now today we're going to talk about a few things. We got, I'm going to teach you how to send data from node to node, how to preserve the data and send custom properties. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to set the variables which uh, are going to be available globally across the flows and within the node itself save some stuff to file and talk in general about data processing. Now, before we're going to start with this tutorial two requests, uh, I would expect you to know a little bit about JSON. I wrote a nice five minute read article uh, for you. It's in the description of this video or in a corner. If you don't know anything about JSON, please go and uh, read it. You'll know everything you need for Tasker or Node-RED or even Raspberry Pi and Python. So uh, please do yourself a favor and do it before this tutorial otherwise you might find it confusing. A second, a second of all, if you've not created a flow before, uh, do watch my previous videos as well because uh, just don't jump into the middle of the tutorial. It's, it's, it's wrong. It's just wrong. If you already created some flows, you know what's what and you just want extra information, perfect, you can continue. So uh, without uh, further me talking, let's jump into a Node-RED, open it up and uh, get started. When we're talking about data processing, we need to enter some data into the system. So I'm just going to use a inject node. Most of the nodes allow you to set a payload or a topic. And uh, this, these are two values that's mostly going to be used across the uh, node red. We're going to talk about custom properties for the message object uh, a little bit later. But for now, we're just going to take care of the payload and the topic. So uh, what I've got in here, let me quickly set some sort of payload and uh, topics. So I've got payload, which is a lot of not enough tech. Why not? And uh, let's uh, set some topic and uh, well, let's put a nice topic, that'll work. And we don't want to enter anything else. Just save this and uh, let's put, save this as uh, enter the data. And that'll be fine. Now, when we press the inject, when we deploy this and press the inject node, uh, what's going to happen? The message object, which is a JSON message, will be sent over to the next node. Now we don't have a next node. However, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drop two debug nodes. Why debug nodes? Because uh, what's going to happen? Most of the time, you're going to use debug uh, to understand how and the message is uh, itself how the, that object how the message object is being affected by your actions and whether your payload has changed correctly or whether your topic has changed correctly most of the nodes will have ability to modify check or read your payload and topic they can also interact with your custom properties we're going to talk about this a little bit later so uh right now i'm going to do two things we're going to talk about the debug in details a little bit so I have a two debug nodes. Uh, the reason I've added two debug nodes is because uh, there are two ways of reading the messages. So first of all, I can get a payload. So uh, that's the default behavior. It's just going to read the payload. If I want, I can change the payload to topic. If I can spell it correctly, and then I'll display the topic. However, neither uh, topic is not needed because it's shown by default. I'll show you in a second. Uh, with each payload message with the default behavior. And the second mode is the entire object, which we're going to request as well and talk about it as well. So let's deploy this. That's great. And now when I enter the data into the system, you'll see two messages. The smaller messages, which, uh, which uh, shows payload, I love not enough tag. This is this one that only displays the payload. And you can see nice topic being here. This is a topic of this message. So that's why I've mentioned we don't have to display custom property, which is a topic in this case. And we have this node, which shows us entire message. So we have access to the JSON file in here. You can see it's formatted as JSON. And this is a payload in here, which is I love not enough tech. 
and your topic in here. And uh, the advantage of uh, displaying uh, the message object entirely is that we're going to have access to custom properties. When we're transferring data between different nodes, the payload or topic can be modified. So let's do that. Let's uh, enter a few different node types and see what we can do. I'm going to pick a template node. I'm going to pick a switch node and I'm going to pick a change node. Let's start with a switch node. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm just going to reset both nodes to a payload. So we would know how the payload is being affected. And switch node basically allows you to assign different outputs depending on what lies in the payload or if you want to change it, what lies in the topic. So for now, I'm just going to uh, use just a one output just to make sure it's valid. So I'm going to do if it's not null because we have a, some sort of payload. It's got it's constantly it's going to be true. Uh, the switch node would, uh, will evaluate uh, our payload and pass it over to the debug node. So, and to make ourselves our life easier, I'm just going to name this uh, node. This is before, and this is after. That's great. So what's going to happen is we're going to get the data in here before it reaches the switch node and after it switches the uh, switch node and you'll see how it looks like. So I'm just going to deploy the changes. That's great. And use this. So as you can see, the switch node will only evaluate the data in the payload. It won't change neither the topic or the payload itself. So this is uh, this is before the message before, as you can see in here, this is uh, from the node and debug node before and this is from the debug node after and the message is exactly the same for both uh, conditions that's great so uh, let's get rid of this and let's use a uh, change node change node in this case what i'm going to do i'm going to move the um, topic to payload so we're going to move and we're going to move the topic to payload. So what's going to happen, our topic is going to be erased and our payload will have a new value. So let's play this and you'll see that we're going to send one message, one object here. It's going to be modified by this node and then sent over to the next node. And when I press inject, that's what happens. So this is our message before it's here and we have our topic, which is a nice topic and our payload, which is I love not enough tech. Now, after hitting the change node, we move the topic to a payload, which means the topic is gone. We no longer have information that ha information has been lost and the payload has been replaced with the value from the topic, which is a nice topic. So that's what happens. Uh, and the last example is the template node. Template node will modify only the payload but you won't modify in here. This is like a new payload, let's say. What's going to happen, you will append this line of text in front of the payload. You will leave the topic alone. So let's deploy this, clear the debug and enter it. So as you can see, our topic stayed the same in both messages. This is before and we have a lot of not enough tech. And after we have, this is a new payload, a lot of not enough tech. So our template node has modified uh, that. You'll quickly understand that the we need to have a way to retain that information so we could change some of the information and add some of the information without wiping completely the payload. And there are ways of doing that. Now we can set a custom properties. Uh, I've explained in my JSON tutorial uh, what are the different properties of the message object and how you can set the custom keys and values in a JSON object and you can do that with a um, node red. So let's uh, remove this and what we're going to do, uh, actually let's leave the template node alone because we're going to use it. And uh, there are two ways of write, well there's more than two ways, but there are two main ways of writing the custom properties. You can use uh, not template, a function node, or you can use a change node. So let's start with the change node. So I'm just going to make a little bit of space. And what we're going to do, we're going to write a diff, like a new property and we're going to set this to something. So I'm going to set a new property, which I'm going to call a custom. 
as a custom property uh, and no symbols there. And I'm going to set it to important message. Important message, done. So now what's gonna happen? Our payload, which was a lot not enough tech, will receive another property. Now, I, to show you custom properties, I need to change uh, the debug to complete message objects as they not being shown by default in a mm, node because it only displays the payload. So I'm just going to do it for both. Great, and redeploy it. Clear the debug and let's uh, run this again. So as you see, I have two different objects in here, two different messages here. So let's evaluate what just happened. This is a before one. So the top one is before. So we have a payload, which says, uh, I love not enough tech. And we have a topic, which says, uh, nice topic. And that message, was uh, sent to the change node and the change node assigned a new custom property. And this is the custom property here. The custom property was assigned co uh, important message. Now, as you remember, the template modified our payload. However, you can see the modified payload in here. Uh, topic was not changed and the custom uh, property uh, has survived. So that message with the custom property would be sent to another uh, node. So if you want to save some information, you can use this. Now, there is another way of doing this. I can just uh, remove this and I can use the function node. So let's open the function node and let me get my, uh, so I don't have to type it. What are we going to do? We're going to assign the same custom property, which is here, uh, to a text. Well, you can't touch this. So basically, I'm setting a variable. Uh, so a system will allocate some space for variable, set it to you can't touch this, and then set message.custom, which is our custom uh, property, to the X, which is here, and then return entire message object. So let's do this connect everything together. I'll show you this a little bit different this time. So I'm just going to link it here and deploy it. Let's clear the board. The board's gonna look in this, the debug menu is gonna look exactly the same. But, uh, so what happened here? So this is before, and you will see that we assigned the custom property with the function node. So it's, it's here, you can't touch this. We still have got unchanged uh, payload because that was before hitting the template node and after the template node we have a modified payload and unchanged custom um, property of that object message. So this is how you add uh, information to your messages and retain them for the duration of the flow. Let's talk now about variables. There are three scopes of variables available in Node-RED. Uh, first of all, it's the variable that is only available within a node itself. That's going to uh, affect more mainly function node, which allows you to set those uh, custom variables, uh, and they are called context variables uh, or context objects. Uh, they are only available in uh, within that node itself. They, they won't be accessible outside of the node, so they have to be uh, saved and restored within that. And to set this, uh, what you have to do is just, uh, uh, this is how you basically set it. So let me just uh, make this window a little bit more visible. Now, context.set and the name of your variable uh, is the uh, basically your given name for that variable in the uh, single quotation marks, and then you can assign it to whatever you want. And if you want to retrieve this variable, you make a space, so, so let's say variable x, and then you use context.get and the name of the variable you want to read. So if you set previously your variable as a name, then you retrieve the information from your variable and then you set, uh, send the message uh, if you want to pass that over to the next stage. So uh, let me put up a small example for you so you could see how it works. So we're going to need an inject node and we're going to need a debug one. So let's get that connected. Uh, payload's gonna be fine for this. And I'm going to make a small counter. And that counter is gonna count how many times we pressed the timestamp. Um, oh, let's inject something. 
this is a message. So you would know that this is not, this doesn't change. So it will count how many times we've pressed that inject button. So uh, I've pasted the code, so I don't have to type it, but I'll explain it. First of all, um, setting a variable count, and that count is going to be uh, get will get the value of the counter variable. Now, if the counter variable doesn't exist, I'm going to create it and set it to zero because uh, I could uh, set it first. But this is how you programmatically do it. Basically, it's a little bit quicker. Now, later on, uh, what I'm going to do is iterate. So it sets at zero, it creates a variable, sets it at zero, and then I'm going to iterate. So basically, it will add one. Now, next up, it will assign a new payload of my message. And that message is going to be whatever I've entered it. So this, this is a message. This is my payload. So it's going to be this is a message and space plus whatever stored in account. So first time, it's going to be one. And then uh, what's going to happen? I'm going to set or save, if you want to say it that way, uh, a value of that count. So in this case, it's going to be one. On the second part, it's going to be two, et cetera, et cetera. And update the uh, variable, the context object counter uh, each time before I return the message. So let's deploy this. So when I send the message for the first time, this is a message, it will count as one. Now, when I press it again, it will count the second count of it, then third, etc., etc., And it will continue that no matter how many times I'm going to do it because the context object is stored in there within that node and it's being counted. Now, if I delete the node, obviously the context information is going to be gone and I won't be able to retrieve it anymore. So this is a context object and it's important. It's only available within that node. You cannot pass the information uh, outside unless you're going to assign the custom property. So I'll, if I uh, if I could do something like, let's say, let's assign custom property, count equals to context.get and then counter. And that should work. So let's deploy it. Change this to the complete message and deploy it again, sorry. Delete this. And you can see I can offload that information to the you know, custom property if I want to. And that's how you would pass it over to the next stage. Right, the next scope up is the flow, which means the uh, variable, the object uh, would be stored within the flow. So I could add another flow. Let's just copy this. And let's do the time stop. Or just pulling through, that's fine. And uh, I can send the information from this node to this node. And to do that, I'm using exactly the same uh, the syntax. However, uh, I'm going to be using flow instead of context uh, command. So this is the flow. And previously there was a um, context. And what, I'm, what we're going to do, we're going to basically save information in one flow and retrieve it in another within the same flow. So I've copied everything so I don't have to um, mess about. So this is flow.set. So we're going to set the flow and we're going to set it to our payload. So payload is this is the message and then we're going to return the object. So let's store it and let's delete the debug. I'm not going to need it. And we're going to retrieve it. So when I press the button here, true, what you're going to do, it's going to retrieve that message. And you do that by assigning a variable and setting that variable to flow.get. And we're obviously going to get uh, the information from store it and then assign it as a payload and pass it over to the um, debug, uh, debug node and just payload here. Let's delete this, deploy. And now what's going to happen? We just save this is a message to a flow context or uh, flow variable. And now when I recall it using true, it's going to pop in here. 
So as you can see, this is a message. That's the message we stored in here, and it's available in a second flow. Now, if I'm going to move this across, it's not going to work. So if I create a new flow, paste it here, delete this, it's not going to work. So uh, to do this, to work like this between the flow, between the flows, you have to use global. And to use global is very similar. It's just a type in global done and so we need to update this script as well to receive the global done and deploy it let's change the message so you you would know this is not a cheat important message done deploy delete here so when I'm going to send important message, I can jump between the flow. And when I press in here, I'm going to have imported message. And that's your global object. And uh, this global object will survive uh, when I redeploy stuff, but it won't survive the server restart. So if you're going to restart Node-RED server, all that data is lost. So you might be thinking, right, so what we're going to do to save any data uh, that will be able to survive uh, the restart of the server? Now that's quite simple. We're going to write it to a file. So we have a file node in here. If I'll be able to find it uh, somewhere. We've got file and a file. So the first node is to save a file. So let's get um, inject something to this file. Delete the debug while we at it. And what we're going to inject is some sort of, I don't know, uh, not enough top is great because it's great. So that's what we're going to save and we need to specify the uh, file and we're going to just override it each time I press it and save .txt as a text file. Uh, yeah, save the file. And that will save it to a file when I press the button, not enough great, uh, not enough tech is great, and I'll save the file. To retrieve it, we need to trigger it. So I'm just going to use the Boolean to just to trigger the file read. It's going to read the file. We need to use the same file in here. So save, save .txt. That's file. And we're going to post it to a debug. Now, bear in mind, as per description of this node, it will only save message payloads. So if you have a custom properties, if you have a um, topic, etc., that uh, information is going to be lost. So you have to offload stuff into a um, payload and then you can save it to a file or you can use a function node to do a little bit more complicated save. But like for now, I'm just going to keep it quite simple for you guys. So everything's ready for me. I'm just going to deploy this and let's test it out. So when I press here, I know that not enough tech is great has been saved to a file. And how do I know this? Because when I click on debug and run the read file option, I have not enough tech is great. And basically that's how you process the data within. By now I would expect you to be a Node-RED data processing specialist. Well, maybe not quite, but you're gonna get there as long as you're gonna use plenty of debug nodes all over. Honestly, the more debug nodes, the better for you because you're gonna understand how the information flows and how to handle the errors. Now, in the next video, which is gonna be probably next Monday, because so far I've been releasing on uh, each Monday, um, we're gonna talk about connectivity in the Node-RED. So I'm going to show you how to get data into the Node-RED and out of the Node-RED itself. And we're gonna talk about ways of doing it via HTTP requests. We're gonna do MQTT as well. And we're gonna do Android integration. So you can send it to your mobile and from a mobile that includes join and task support, brilliant stuff. And also IFTTT. So this complicated name with a service that connects to pretty much everything. And that should be very exciting for you. So um, that's going to be probably next Monday. If you want to get notification, obviously subscribe or click that notification thingy on the uh, YouTube channel. Follow me on social media because each time I post, I uh, post that to my social media so you could get notified via your preferred channel. 
and if you want I'd appreciate it if you could support me so if you want to buy me a coffee you can do it in the links uh, below or you can join our Patreon group where people support me. So for now thanks so much for watching and I'm gonna see you probably sooner than next Monday but with this tutorial series that's gonna be longer. Until then, bye!